Hello and welcome to our final step, step 12. I bet you're happy to see the end of this. So in this video we'll do graphic display options, some shadow settings and interior daylight renders. So you know what to do. Open, stage 12, open. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go to our project browser and double click on interior daylight. And the next thing we're going to do is go over to our properties palette and turn the section box on. Now, if you zoom out a little bit, it'll give you an idea of how the section box works. Now, if you select it, you can see the little pull handles. Now, sometimes it's advised that you can do this within the view without mucking up your view. And the reason why we do this is because it actually controls how much rendering will happen when the section box is activated. Another way of controlling this is if you go to your 3D view, you can see exactly the area that we're going to render. And if you want to tighten it up, you can do. So we could actually go to the top view and maybe pull it in a bit. And if you want to double check what you're doing with the other window, press WT on your keyboard and then zoom out slightly on both views. And if we go back to our plan and pull it in a bit, you'll notice the effects that we're having. So that seems to be okay. I can pull it in a little bit more. So it's around about there. So I'm happy with that. So then we go back to our interior daylight view. We'll close the 3D. Now once all your section box has been tightened up around your room, what we'll do is we'll go down to the options bar at the bottom, the graphic options bar at the bottom, and we'll choose the visual style and change the graphic display options. A new window will open. I'm sure you've seen this before. And what we'll do is we'll control the shadows first to show ambient shadows, then press apply, and you can see what happens in the view. And then we'll change the lighting and we'll change the sun to 100. And then we'll change the ambient light to 85. And we'll change the shadows pretty much to about 30 and then press apply. So you can see the automatic updates a lot more brighter, but that will have quite a impact on our rendering. Now staying within the graphic options display, you'll also notice under the model display, we have silhouettes. We can actually do some wide lines, press apply or we can do some thin lines, press apply, and you'll see the updates. If it's not happening on your screen, press OK at the bottom, go up to the very top and change your thin line to thick line. But again, you can do that with your keyboard with TL, so it's either thin line or thick line. Now, if we go back to our graphic attributes bar and press the graphic display options again, we also have an option to do sketchy lines. So we can enable sketchy lines and then we can do a jittery effect and press apply and you can see exactly what's happening. And you can do extensions on the corners and press apply. So you have a good idea of what kind of sketchy effect you can do. Now, once you're happy with that, if we close the graphic display options, and then go back to our graphic attributes bar at the bottom and choose the render button, which is the teapot. We will set the quality to high and we will put printer settings at 150 DPI. And it's important to note that we are doing an interior render. So we'll do interior sun only just for this one. And once you're happy with that, we'll press render. Again, I will pause my video and open it back up again once it's done. So let's press the render button. Okay, if your render has come out incredibly overexposed, you know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go over to the adjust exposure and we're going to make it a lot darker and then press apply and you can see what's happening. So again, just like before, we can either make the highlights brighter or darker. We can make the shadows darker. We can change the saturation to be a bit more intense or more grayer and we can make it cooler or warmer. Again, you've seen this before. Now, if you're not happy, press reset and you're back to square one. So 
It's totally up to you how you think it looks. So once you've done that, press OK. OK, so once you're happy with your adjusted exposure, just like before, if you want to save the project, you can. And if you want to export it, you can. All right, so I'm happy with that. So I'm going to close my rendering window. And what I want you to do now is go over to our project browser and double click on 3D section level two, and then close the interior daylight view. So here, what we're going to do is add a decal, uh, basically a picture that we can load into the project that can only be visible in the graphic attributes bar under realistic. So we've set it to realistic and then we go up to our insert tab and we choose just above link decal and we'll do a place decal. Now what you're going to do next is click on the wall and you will see that we are creating little squares. Now if you want to edit that we go over to edit type edit the decal attributes and we need to load an image in. So to do that, we press this little button here with the three little dots on it and select the park grass image and press open. The image will be loaded. You can see the preview here. And if you want to change the brightness, reflectivity, transparency, etc., you can do that here, but it's recommended that you don't do that on the first try. You do that on the second try. So for now we'll press okay and then press apply and you can see in the background exactly what's happened. So I'm okay with that for the moment, so I'll press OK. Now if I want to edit it, I can go back to my edit type, then press the attributes, and then add it the brightness, etc, etc. But as you can tell on your screen and mine, it's absolutely fine. Now if you've got one selected, you can actually see we have a cross right through the middle and four little blue dots. So you can actually hover over a blue dot and make it bigger. So you could actually do an entire wall. Now if you wanted to actually add additional images, you can go back up to the insert tab, back to the decal button and press decal types, where you can add and load different images to your heart's content and swap and change between them. We'll press OK for that. So these images we've put in will only work under a realistic view, a ray trace view or a render. So if we go to our project browser and choose 01OG and then if we place a camera so we go up to our view tab 3D view camera and then click here and then here the view will open and you will see that we have our decals on the wall you may need to widen the horizons of your crop box and then if you go down to your graphic attributes press realistic you will see exactly what we've done. Okay, just to give an overview of what you've learned, if we go to our renderings and click through them, you will see exactly the kind of stuff that we've created. And I hope you enjoyed what you've learned in these three stages. Now, depending on whether your company has decided for ATD to create an Office Revit template, there will be additional training steps after this. But if that's not the case, I would like to thank you for doing these trainings and I hope to be a part of your company and helping you out with future projects. Thank you very much for your time and uh, don't forget, close all your windows and do not save and thank you.